Hey guys, there's not really an easy way to say this. Um, I've come down with a sickness. I've caught the 3D printing bug. Now don't worry, this is not going to become a 3D printing channel, I promise. But I've really been digging this thing and I thought it'd be fun to talk about how much I've enjoyed it and how useful I've found it. Now obviously I've printed some cheap little trinkets and toys and such, mostly because my kid likes them. And I'll be honest, I think they're fun too. But I've mostly found a lot of cool things I can print that help out around the house, around my workspace, and most importantly for this channel, when working on computers. Now first let's talk about the actual 3D printer I got, which is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And I want to be clear, Bamboo Lab did send this over so I could talk about it, but to be honest I was already considering buying one. At $300 it seemed like a really good deal, and now I believe it's $250, which is a really stinking good deal, and I'm kind of tempted to buy a second one. Anyway, I digress. Bamboo Lab did send this over, and really the only stipulation with their like partner program is that essentially if I like it, I just use it in a video and talk about it. So yeah, I like it a lot, and so here I am talking about it a little bit. I think the main thing I like about this is just how simple it is to use. One of the reasons I was hesitant to get into 3D printing was I just didn't have the time to spend with tinkering and calibrating and working on a 3D printer just to print things, but Bamboo Lab's done a really good job of just making printers that seem to work really well out of the box. It was super easy to get set up with very simple assembly instructions, and I honestly think it was working on my first 3D print within about 30 minutes of opening the box. And it really does just work. I think I've had two failed prints and one of them was my fault because I tried to print out in my garage and I didn't realize it was going to get quite as cold that night and so it kind of shrunk and got messed up, but that was my fault. Really the only downsides that I've found with this thing are that A, you're limited to certain filaments because it's not enclosed, and B, it has a pretty small print bed. This has come into play for me a few times in trying to print larger things and I've had to like cut stuff and like glue it together. So that is a bit of a bummer, but honestly at 300 or now $250, you're going to have to make a few sacrifices. But other than that, it's been pretty much flawless and super easy to use. And so if you're looking for a really simple printer just to actually print things to use and actually use it as a tool, I honestly can't recommend this thing enough, especially now that it's down to 250 bucks. And you might be like me and be like, ah, I'm not really a maker. Why should I get one of these? But I found it to be really useful and I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting one sooner because it would have really helped with some projects I've worked on on this channel. And that's actually kind of what I wanted to do in this video today was go back to a few projects where had I had this 3D printer I might have done things a little bit differently. So let's start with this HP Elite Desk G3 Mini that I used in this video where I talked about M.2 E key slots. One of the things I tried in that video was using an M.2 E key to Ethernet adapter but I had to just kind of dangle it out the back. If I did have a 3D printer, I could have made it look much neater. It didn't take me long to find someone who had made a model for the exact same G3 Mini and Ethernet adapter that I used in that video. So I printed it off and with a few screws, assembled the whole thing in just a couple of minutes. And it looks substantially better than, well, what I had before. Another video I made a while back was for my actual $150 DIY NAS, where I also included the cost of hard drives. For that, I used a really cheap Dell Optiplex 3020 and chucked in two hard drives. Now, if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't have 3D printed anything for that video because it kind of would have ruined the whole idea of a $150 build, but I came across a really cool design that someone had made to replace the two bay drive cage and a lot of Dell Optiplexes to a four bay cage. So I downloaded it and chucked it into Bamboo Studio and started printing it, but this was one of the failed prints I actually had because, like I said, I had it out in my garage for a bit because it had been kind of warmer, but it got really cold one night and uh, this just sort of didn't work. But I moved it back inside and reprinted it without any issues, other than the fact that the print bed was a little bit too small, so I had to cut it into pieces and then glue it together, but I eventually got it printed out with no issues. After drilling out some rivets to get the original cage out, I was able to screw it in without too many issues. Now obviously that system only came with two caddies, so I just printed some more. I decided to go with a more simple design that's great because it saves filament, but also makes it really easy to put them on backwards and have to take them apart and put it back together again. The fit of the original caddies was great, but the fit of the printed caddies was a little bit loose and didn't have that satisfying snap when they went in, but they held in place just fine and honestly I think this makes for a pretty cool looking DIY NAS, especially if you wanted to print some more adapters to put more drives up in the two optical bays, which I decided to not do with this case because I found a really cool design to convert three five and a quarter inch bays to a four bay hard drive cage. This design even had these really simple drive sleds that just squeeze onto the side of the drives and then snap into place. 
It also has room for a 120 millimeter fan, but since that's not super pet or kid friendly, I also printed off this really simple fan grill and got everything assembled. Obviously, I needed a case with three five and a quarter inch base to put this in, and I ended up grabbing a case that only some of the most OG viewers might recognize. This is the case I used back when I set up my crappy little $5 power supply server. It's just been sitting in storage for a few months now, but for a cheap case I found in the trash, it's actually pretty cool with five three and a half inch drive base and those three five and a quarter inch base. I slid the cage into the front and screwed it in with no issues, and yeah, it's a little bit janky, but it's honestly kind of my style. While it's really cool that you can find so many awesome designs online, one thing I found to be really fun is starting to learn some really basic CAD. I made a few different things like this little tool holder that I put on my workbench for all of the tools I use the most, as well as some other handy little things like these clips I made for the boom arm for my microphone. The cable that normally runs on the inside of that died, and so I made these little clips to run another cable but keep it nice and tidy. I did want to try and design something basic for some computer components, and when thinking back on projects I've done, I remembered the 10 gigabit NIC that I attached a fan to with a zip tie. While that did work, I thought it would be fun to make a more sophisticated solution. So with a few measurements from the heatsink, I threw together a little clip specifically for that card so that I could just snap on a fan. If I'm honest, it took some trial and error, and I had a few prints that were either a little too loose or a little too tight, but I eventually got it right. To be fair, the zip tie worked just fine, but this little clip is somewhat satisfying. It's been really cool finding ways to print adapters and mounts and things like that for computers, but honestly the majority of what I've been printing are helpful bespoke mounts and adapters and hangers and organizers for various things around my house. Not only does the filament that I use to print these things cost less than if I bought it off of like Amazon or something, but it's also nice that I don't have to buy some generic thing, I can buy the exact thing I need. Like for example, I printed some shelves for storing hard drives that are exactly the size I need for 3.5 inch hard drives, helping to cut down on wasted space. I started working on this cool hex organizer wall where I can print mounts for specific things and it also just looks cool. I also printed these cool holders for all of my stands in my studio. I've also printed really helpful organizers for stuff like RAM and hard drives and M.2 SSDs. And I even printed this little, th oh gosh. And I also printed this little thumb, which is really stupid, but I stick this on top of my light stands. So whenever I go set up to film, I don't forget to take pictures for thumbnails because I have done that so many times where I finished filming all of the B-roll, I put everything up and then I'm like, oh crap, I forgot a thumbnail. So I have to go set it all back up to try to take a good picture for a thumbnail. So this has actually saved me quite a bit of time and it's really stupid, but it's been helpful. I know this video isn't crazy or anything and I imagine a lot of you who've been printing for years are like, yeah, man, duh, you're way behind the eight ball on this. And that's totally fair. But I also imagine there's people out there like me that don't realize how practical or useful a simple 3D printer can be and or don't think they have the time to maintain one. So I thought it would be fun to make a quick video talking about my experience and how much I'm enjoying this and this new hobby and more importantly, how I think it's going to make some cool stuff for this channel. Speaking of that, I want to hear from you guys. If you have any cool ideas for how I could use 3D printing to mod or fix computers or build cool projects, let me know down in the comments below. I also have a pretty big project coming up that's going to involve quite a bit of 3D printing, so if you're interested, make sure and stay tuned for that. Honestly, that video was going to be what I used to initially kind of debut this 3D printer, but I've had some issues with some contractors and such, and we've had to push the date back. So I'll get to that eventually, but I thought it would be fun to make this video and do some cool little projects instead. I do want to say thanks to Bamboo Lab for sending this over for the channel. And if you're interested in picking up an A1 Mini, I will have some affiliate links down in the description below. However, if you actually are interested in potentially making a purchase, I would recommend you go check out some reviews from people who actually know a lot more about 3D printing than I do. I know this video was pretty short, but hopefully you guys still enjoyed it. And that's about it. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.